everyone, I'm Jess. And I'm Jamie. And we're running the race. You kids can catch us on the Freedom Church YouTube channel every Monday. So get your sweat bands on and join in. You adults too. But for now, let's get ready for church with our family from across the world. From our house to yours, let's do church! Welcome to Freedom Church. It's so good to have you connecting with us today, especially if this is your first time. Yeah, and we're so grateful to be able to meet online together. And if we've not met in person, I'm Naomi. This is Chris, and we lead here in Cape Town, South Africa. Freedom is a global family, and there is so much happening right now all over the world. Lots of it is happening online, where you can connect with us on social media. Go find us and don't miss out. We have churches all over the world and over the past months it's been great to meet new people and see the creativity in our church. There's been some really powerful creative content made and shared but there's also been some really fun content as well, some great comedy. We're going to watch now a TikTok from our church family in East Africa. Sir, 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 what have you been up to? I want to become a teacher. What do you mean? Because I want to be like Jesus. How oh, now? Because he turn tables. Oh. Oh, don't leave me, don't leave me. Give me another one, sir. I'm busy. Just one more. Can't you see I'm on a call? What do you mean? What is this? What is that? It's a miracle. Oh, 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 oh. Don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. Come, 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 yes, come, sir. What is this? I don't know. It's a union. Yes, sir. And I just told you to come. Communion. Oh, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me. What are you doing? I'm testing. What do you mean? I'm testing. What do you mean? What is this? It's money. Testimony. Oh, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Who are you? Jordan. Oh, what is that? I don't know. Jordan River. Oh, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Sir. Don't leave me. Oh, don't leave me. Sir. We absolutely love it. Please keep sending in and sharing your creative content with us, especially your comedy content. It's so good right now for us to be able to have laughs. Yeah, it is a really unusual time. For a lot of people around the world, it has been hugely challenging. We're going to get an update on what's been happening around the world from Manning in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're then going to hand over to the Everyone Matters Fund team, who are going to explain to us how we can help make a positive difference in the world right now. You may be wondering what is going on in our world right now. From health to politics to culture to, well, the outright ridiculous, here are just a few of them. One of the things that's increased across our world is online shopping. I want to give you guys a tip on how to make it a bit more interesting. There was a mom in Delaware who noticed on her security camera an Amazon delivery driver doing this mom quickly realized that her young son had something to do with this when he left very special instructions in the order. He decided to write, knock three times, yell abracadabra as loud as you can, and run away very fast. Abracadabra! Some people have found very interesting ways of keeping entertained over the past couple of weeks and months. One man, in an attempt to break a world record by the name of David Rush, took 92 hits to the face in one minute by wet sponges. The previous record was 76, which I'm sure all of you were already aware of, right? He has 150 Guinness World Records to his name. So that was honestly a very average day. Is anyone up for breaking a bizarre world record? Let's go for it. Coronavirus is still impacting people right across the world. But amongst the stories of tragedy, there are stories of hope and of healing. Mal Martin from South Wales contracted coronavirus back in April and was given a zero chance of survival. His friends and family said bye to him as he was placed in an induced coma. His wife, Sue, shared his story on radio and online, and there was a massive wave of support that came in. 
To the shock of his doctors, he was miraculously healed and is today back at home. How amazing is that? So among all of the bad news out there, there's still good news. However, church, we still need to be praying for India and for our church family in Chennai. India has the third largest number of COVID cases at 697,000. Every day, they see about 20,000 new cases. Because of this, hospitals are now having to turn people away who have coronavirus. So church, let's keep praying and asking God to move in these difficult situations, just like he has done so many times before. When some countries may be returning to normal after lockdowns, the fight against COVID-19 is far from over. Despite progress flattening the curve in countries like New Zealand, Cambodia and Iceland, the spread of virus is speeding up in many countries. Here in India, we have the third highest rate of COVID-19 cases in the world, with almost 700,000 cases reported. South Africa is also still amongst the worst hit countries in the world, with almost 200,000 cases reported. While the virus itself has had a devastating effect, the subsequent lockdown restrictions enforced all over the world have had a huge impact on the global economy. The the United Nations has warned the pandemic could almost double the number of people suffering acute hunger. This is why we launched Everyone Matters Fund, which provides help to those who have been impacted by coronavirus pandemic, especially those that have little or no access to government support. We are working in countries like India and South Africa to provide food, medication and any other forms of vital assistance to those in need of help. Since we launched EMF in April, we have helped almost 11,000 people and have raised almost 100,000 pounds. Each one of those people has a story. But let me share just one from India. Unable to find work, Faith and Godson did not know how to provide for the twin boys when the lockdown set in. However, with the help of Everyone Matters Fund, Faith and Godson can face lockdown restrictions because they know they have all the support they need. This is just one story. Your generosity has literally helped thousands more. While life in some part of the world is returning back to normal, for so many people, including us here in India, we are not out of the woods yet. There's so many people who are in need of help and support, and that's why we are inviting you to give generously, courageously, so that we can continue to help those in need around the world at this time. To learn more or donate, visit freedomchurch.cc forward slash EMF. Together, we can make a difference. It's been amazing to witness the generosity of the church over these past months. A huge thank you to everyone who has given into the Everyone Matters Fund. You've helped feed, clothe, accommodate and pay medical costs for people all around the world. We really are so grateful to you. Thank you for giving. Yeah, and hearing stories like this, it keeps me going during this time, hearing how God is changing people's lives in our church and moving powerfully at this time. We're going to head to Uganda and East Africa now, where we're going to hear the incredible story from a, a precious part of our family there, Faith. She was impacted deeply by God over these past weeks. After she shared, we're going to be heading over the border from Uganda to Rwanda, and we're going to be receiving today's message off Jordan. I gave my life to God in 2014. Along the way, I walked away from God. I entered in the bad relationship. I felt like God doesn't like it, and it wasn't good. I started condemning myself. I started praying to God. Then I had a feeling that God doesn't listen to me because I have done wrong. I asked God to, uh, to give me encourage to end that relationship. I started feeling like God doesn't love me anymore, and nobody care about me, even God. I, I was crying a lot. I called my friend Esther. One day I received a call from her. She was a bit sad and distressed. She, she was crying. I told her, I feel like I don't have joy in my life. I don't want to live anymore in this world. But then after that, I felt like I needed to 
go there and see what was happening and I, I walked from my place to, to her place. She was in the midst of a very terrible breakup, so sad and depressed, so I, we, we prayed together, I, I encouraged her, but I felt convicted that maybe it was the right thing to invite her to, to my home. We were having church online, I thought it would be a great opportunity for her to join us with church. So. She moved in with me, we prayed together, I encouraged her, I encouraged her to read the Bible. Then in the morning, she, she woke up, she told me that Faye, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was stretching my hand praying for her and Pastor Chris was preaching. So when I woke up, I told her that I had a dream, I was praying for you, but I don't remember exactly what I prayed for for you. And I didn't know exactly what he was saying, but I saw her in the dream talking, and as he was talking, I had stretched my hand praying for faith. When I, I told her, the person who was preaching, she didn't know who Chris was, but I told her that after the preach, I, I will check on Facebook and show her Chris's picture. Uh, so when the preach started, it was Chris preaching, and I was like, that's, that's the person, that's Chris. So let me ask you this question, where in your life right now do you need to experience God's gift of peace? And we leaned into the preach, the preach was talking about peace, things that rob us of our peace, and, and that time we both knew that that was a confirmation for her, that God had answered her prayer, that all the weeks she had taken seeking God to answer her, God to show her that he, he really cares about her. She felt like this, is, this was for her, that's what God wanted her to know. In that evening, I forgive all the people who did wrong to me, then I asked, I repented, I asked God forgiveness and to take me back and I started experiencing the Holy Spirit. I've seen this amazing change in her. She has been more happy lately. She's always joyful. She's, she's always spending time in the Word, praying, spending time with God. And I'm so grateful and excited that actually during this lockdown, like it created some time for me and her to be together and encourage each other, which has been amazing and I'm so excited. I make sure that every day I have a time to God for listening and talking. Because I remember Esther told me that God is our friend. The way you talk to your friends is the way you talk to God. From that day, from that time, um, I'm free. And he will be waiting for you to come back where you left him. His arms are open for everyone. Now I'm ex I am experiencing the love of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for that preaching of that day because it was for me. I'm so grateful to you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Man, this is such a crazy time. There is so much going on in our world right now. And one of the things I keep saying is, it feels like we're in a movie, right? You know, I'm passing people on the street who are, you know, wearing face masks and everywhere you go, people are hand sanitizing and you got washing stations outside every shop and restaurant and home. There is so much going on in our world. And the pandemic's just one thing. There's also just so much, whenever you log on, to the news and you see what's going on in our world, there's a different issue, a different problem every single day, and it can be overwhelming, right? And that's just the world struggle. We've also got personal struggles. I know for so many of us, for some of us, we've lost jobs because of Corona, and we're wondering when is that job gonna come about? When is that, when am I gonna get that new client that's gonna help me pay the bills in this time of struggle and need? You know, for some of us, it's also health struggles, whether it's health struggles for ourselves, or maybe a family member, a close friend, and it just seems to be thing after thing. I know for some of us, we've even lost people recently. Amongst all the other chaos that's going on, we then lose friends or family. It's been such a difficult time. I know also for some of us, maybe you're single, 
And in this time of lockdown, you can't help but think about it all. It just comes back to the surface where you're wondering, when am I gonna meet that future person? that future wife or husband that you've been waiting so patiently for, when is it gonna happen, God? And we're just faced with these world struggles and with our personal struggles. And in the face of a mountain, you can't help but look at the detail of the crags on that rocky face. You can't help but look at the size of this mountain that sits before us. And you can't help but be overwhelmed by it at times. And even the giants that stand in our life, you know, sometimes it's hard to find the faith to overcome it. Again, we can't help but lock eyes with the giant before us and look at the color of its eyes or acknowledge the height of this giant which stands in front of us. We start to look at the face of our giant and we can feel very, very small in these times. But God asks us to have faith. And that sounds great when you're reading it in scripture, sounds great when you're quoting it online, but when you are in the middle of a storm and things are looking pretty tough, it is overwhelming. We can all admit that 2020 looks nothing like we expected at the beginning of the year. And God says, have faith. But it's in times like this that doubt creeps in. And doubt, I I think of doubt sometimes like a cancer. You know, you, you can't see cancer. At the beginning, you can't see the small stages of it, but it creeps in and it can grow and it can fester and eventually it can kill. And doubt is the cancer to our faith where it can spread in a moment. It can take over our faith and it can kill it oftentimes. And we see it right at the beginning in Genesis, right? Right at the beginning of time, we see Adam and Eve who had perfect communion with God. God spoke to them. God moved in their lives. He spoke to them and gave them commands, but then the enemy, the snake, comes in so deceitfully. And you know what? He doesn't shove an apple down their throat. What he does is he comes in and he whispers a seed of doubt. He sows in a seed of doubt into their hearts and into their minds. And he says, is that really what God said? Is that really what he meant? Is God really who he says he is? And are his words really true? And in these times, you know, we've all got promises that God has spoken over us. We all have things that that we're believing for and we know that God had said, but in these times, doubt can sneak in and say, Is that really what God said? Is that really what he meant? And we can be overwhelmed by our situations, by our circumstance, and doubt can sneak in and try and rob our faith. So guys, doubt is real. And it wants to come in and steal your hope, steal your joy, but ultimately steal your faith. So guys, doubt is a real thing, especially in hard times like this, right? And there's just so much going on. And um, you know, it, it's, it's in times like this though, that God calls us to go on a journey of faith, to really believe him even when you can't see what is around the corner and what is next, to believe the promises that he made to us. And that is, you know, much easier said than done, but it is what we have to do as believers. And, you know, in this time, God is calling us to go on a journey of faith. How much are we believing in his promises right now in the face of all this difficulty? And, you know, I I really believe that these hard times, they grow our faith. And I believe that that is why God allows hardships to happen sometimes, is because it grows something in us. And actually, mature and unwavering faith is one of the most precious things that we can behold. It's one of the most precious things that we can have. And in this time, we can either give in to doubt or we can give ourselves fully to faith and say, even though I don't know what tomorrow looks like, I believe that God is good and that something is gonna turn around. So we're all called to go on a journey of faith. 
And I think the harder the situation, the more faith is required. You know, you look throughout the Bible again and again and all these heroes of the faith, you know, they, they needed faith as even in their name. But, you know, there, there's this promise that is made by God and then there's this bit in between until the promise happens. And you think about, you know, even the promised land, you know, one of the biggest promises that God makes in the Old Testament, I'm going to give you the promised land. But there is a journey of faith in between actually getting there. Again, you know, Joseph, you're going to lead a nation and be a, an amazing influence and help people. And he ends up in prison. There is a journey of faith to go on from the promise to seeing it come through. Abraham, another favorite of all of ours, but he also gets promised that he's going to be a father of nations, a father of many, but there is a journey of faith to go on before that promise comes to being. So there's always this time where God gives us a promise. He promises something. He tells us something and it doesn't always happen straight away. We have to go on the journey of faith and we are right now, guys, we are in the in-between promises have been made and the promise might not yet be there like I said for your future partner maybe that healing you're believing for maybe even this covid season God promises good things and he is a good God he has made promises and the promises are yet to come about and we are in the in-between so I just want to ask how is your faith journey in this time are you believing that God is going to come through or is doubt creeping in instead? Because your journey of faith matters so much. It is so important to God. And faith is what opens and closes doors. And so it's important to Him. And a lot of the time, this journey can actually be more important than the destination. You know, even the what is obtained whilst waiting for the promise can almost be even more sweeter than the promise itself. So guys, where are you at? Is your heart and your mind, does it default to doubt or faith in this unprecedented time? So guys, we are all on a journey of faith. You know, God has made promises and then there's, there's this gap of time in between and then the promises come and it's in between that we have to have faith, this journey of faith. And one of my favorite stories in the Bible, one of my favorite moments is when Abraham, before he's Abraham, he's called Abraham, and God has promised him that he would have, you know, as many children and descendants as, you know, all the nations and all this stuff. And it's such an amazing promise, but reality hits Abraham. It's like, how is this gonna happen? How is this gonna come about? He looks at the clock that is ticking. He looks at time that is going. He looks at his circumstance and situation and thinks this is just not possible. And even though God's audible voice spoke to him, he still struggled with doubt. It came creeping in. And one of my favorite moments is in Genesis 15. And it's this moment where Abraham, you know, he's overwhelmed with some situations that are going on. He still hasn't seen the promise happen that God promised before. And he's in his tent, he's in his dwelling and, and he's just at home and he's there thinking, God, when is this gonna happen? How is this gonna happen? He even says to God, look, I still don't have a son. I haven't got what you've promised me yet. And he's there wondering, how is this gonna take place? He even starts to say, God, maybe you want me to use one of my servants as an heir. Maybe that's how it's gonna come about. And God says, no, 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 it's going to be a son from your own body. And so what God then does is he actually brings Abraham from out of his, out of his tent and he says, look at the stars and it's an eastern night sky and they say that you can count over 8,000 stars in an eastern dark night sky and he says go on try counting those stars and he brings Abraham from out of the confines of his tent from this ceiling and these walls and brings him out to the vastness that he's surrounded by and even here right now we're in Rwanda and you know this is the land of a thousand hills and if you look out right now I can't see the end where the hills end. And this is just a land of a thousand hills. And it's the same for Abraham. 
you know, God brought him out and he said, go ahead and count. See, it's unending. It's this vastness. Even the stars in the sky, you have to give up counting because there's too many of them. And what does the tent represent? The tent represents our own limitations, our own human thinking, what makes sense, what can happen. You know, where's that future partner? You know, the time is ticking, but it's different for God because that's just our human limitations. Again, even, you know, that, that job, that thing, even this coronavirus, it all feels so overwhelming when we are in the confines of our tent. But what God is asking you to do today is come from out of your tent and look at the stars. The stars represent his infinite power. The stars represent his sovereignty. The stars show how epic and powerful he really is, that nothing is impossible for him. What I love in scripture as well is it doesn't say look up at the sky, it says look to the heavens and count the stars. God isn't even talking about the ceiling of a tent, but even the ceiling of the sky and the earth, he's saying go beyond that. And that is what he asks Abraham to do go ahead and count the stars. And I really believe, guys, that God is inviting us to come from out of the tent and to start counting the stars. God wants us to come from out of the tent in our hearts and our minds. And that is the tent of limitation. That is the tent of time. That is the tent of what if, what if. That is the tent of discouragement. Maybe even the tent of depression. God wants to invite you to come out from the tent and to look at how big he really is. And it's in those moments that we see the mountain crumble. It's in those moments that we see the giant taken down when we see how big God really is. Guys, faith is so precious. We have it in our DNA, amazing faith. It is through faith that we receive salvation. Time and time again, Jesus heals and he says, it is by faith that you are made well. And it is by faith that you will behold the promises that God has for your lives. Okay guys, so I've just got four points that I want us to go away with today to work on this thing of faith. And the first one is remember. Remember how good God is. Remember all the things that he has already done for us. Remember where he has come through time and time again. You know, even like the Israelites and they're in the wilderness and they were in that in-between waiting to receive the promise of the promised land, but they complained and they moaned and they grumbled because they were in serious struggle, but they didn't remember when God split the Red Seas and they walked through out of slavery and into freedom. Remember what God has done for you. Remember, even in the lives around you, what he has done there as well. The next one is don't engage with doubt. Like we talked about Eve earlier, she heard the voice of the enemy that tried to come in and sow a seed of doubt. And you know what? She entertained it. She listened to it. She engaged with it. And you have to rebuke that voice that comes. Be like David, that when he saw Goliath and Goliath tried to intimidate him and overwhelm him, he didn't listen to the voices of doubt. Instead, he said, my God will overcome today because he was looking at God, not looking and engaging with doubt in that moment. And the third one, guys, get around faith-filled people. Get around people who are full of faith, who are going to inspire and light something up within you as well. Don't be surrounded by people who just speak negativity and doubt and fear, but get around people who are going to believe that things are going to change in our world. Believe and get around others who are full of faith. Let it be contagious in your spirit as well. And lastly, get in the presence of the promise maker. You have to know who God is in order to trust that he's going to be true to his word. Faith is believing in what we cannot yet see, but we have faith because we know the person who promised it. When God makes a promise and we know who he is and we spend time in his presence and we know his promises to be true and full of life, then we can trust them and we can have faith. So guys, get in the presence of the promise maker. Get in his presence. It will be the best thing for your faith to be in your word, to be praying, to be just staying in his presence, to be spending time with him in the mornings. You know, are we looking at the news first or are we looking into his eyes and letting him define how we feel that day? 
And guys, at the beginning of this message, I talked about, you know, that there's, there's the struggle of the world right now, but there's also our personal struggles. And I believe God is challenging us to have faith in both. Sometimes it's easier maybe to believe for other things and maybe not personally ourselves or somewhat, sometimes the other way around, like, yeah, I can believe for this thing, but this whole coronavirus, it just seems too big for me. And one of the reasons I wanted to come out here into the openness as well was to remind ourselves, you know, even looking out at the vastness of God's creation, that God has created these hills, these skies, everything, all the detail, every single, every single mountain and hill and landscape. You know, He has control over the world right now. But also what I love when I come out onto the hills is also the detail you see as well. And even the smallest thing, like this flower, God cares about the details and He cares about you right now. You and your struggles, your pain, your difficulty, whatever it is right now, God cares because He is this big, yet the, He is this intimate. And even the detail on here just reminds me of how much God cares about every single detail in our lives. He knows the hairs on your head, every single number of them. He knows, you know, even it says his thoughts towards you are so good and they outnumber the sand of the seas. He loves you and he cares so much about your situation. And I just wanna say if you are struggling with faith right now, hold on, God can hear you and he cares for you so, so deeply. But guys, what I really love about this story as well is it actually says in scripture, it says he took him outside. It actually wasn't Abraham who took himself outside. You know, he didn't take himself out of the tent. This isn't some self-help thing of, you know, get out of the tent of your mind, but it is something that we need God to help us with. It literally says that God took him outside and placed him under the stars. And so right now, before we move on, before we just move on with our lives, I want us to respond. I want us to ask God for more faith. I want us to ask him, God, would you take us out of the tents in our minds and our hearts and bring us under the stars? Would you be the one to bring us out into the night sky, into the hills and say, can you even count them? So guys, I really believe that right now, you know, as we pray, as we listen to this song that's about to come, I really want us to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts, to restore any faith that is lost, to eradicate any doubt that might be lingering, for us to be able to come out of tonight and say, I believe, I have full faith, and I'm not giving in to doubt and fear. So let me just pray for us right now. God, I thank you for this message. I thank you for this story of Abraham. God, I thank you, Lord, for the countless stars in the sky, God, that remind us of how great you are, God. Lord, even as I'm stood here, God, surrounded by the hills that you created with your hands, God, would you move us? Would you lead us? Would you guide us? And I pray, God, that right now, as we listen to this song, would it minister to our hearts? Holy Spirit, would you come into every home and would you speak to us? Would you move us? Would you remove any doubt from our heart and give us a fresh portion of faith we pray God these are crazy times and I pray Lord that we would have the right amount of faith to be able to overcome in these days so Lord we love you and we trust you God we trust that you are coming through with your promises God I speak to people who are without jobs right now people who are in lack people who are believing for healing people who are still waiting for that future partner and I speak into their heart and I say believe again have faith again God would you restore faith in our lives, we pray. Amen. Pressure helps us see who we really are. Moving mountains of unbelief, once easy, now seems hard. And we all like to think we'll rise up when pressure falls, but then doubt comes around. After all, this year isn't turning out like I thought. One step forward, two steps back. Once hoping and believing, but now my faith is retreating and in my lack, doubt asked, what do you think about that? And on my own, I'm tossed to and fro by waves of worry that worship my own throne, my needs, my wants, what feeds my heart, lost on an open sea of unbelief and I'm out far. But then he lifts my head 
and I see the stars. Every one a shining mark of the promises he's kept and I look ahead and I see him there. Walking on the waves that caved my faith and he shows he cares because he came. See, his love cannot leave me the same. And his love begins to restore my faith. So I fix my gaze. I step out on those waves. I put my own doubt to shame as I rejoice in Jesus' name. As I remember what he's done. As I sing his kingdom come. So I won't let pressure steal my faith. No, I'll go through it with his grace. And I'll come out stronger than before. With faith that's anchored in the Lord. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and for foundation. He'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and for foundation. One amazing message there from Jordan. And isn't Rwanda a beautiful country? Faith is what we stand on and faith is what we need in this season. If you've never committed your life to Jesus but would like to take a next step in your journey with him, then reach out to us via the live chat right now or send us an email. We'd love to connect with you. Yeah, it's been great to be together again. And church, let's action this word this week and see it impact our world. We'll be back again next week. Please invite those that you're connected with. We can't wait to see you next Sunday.